Now to the rise of shoplifting, Target says that last year it lost hundreds of millions of dollars from theft. And Target says that theft and organized retail crime is becoming a major problem at its more than 2,000 stores. And shoplifting is now so bad, Target is taking controversial new measures to stop thieves, like ordering employees to confront them when they steal just $50 worth of stuff. Proponents say this is necessary to keep more stores from closing like the flagship store in Harlem did last year. But critics say this could put store employees at risk because in New York, our thieves aren't exactly gentle. Target explained why it made the difficult decision to shutter this store and eight others on the West Coast. Theft and organized retail crime are threatening the safety of our teens and guests. The company reporting it lost $763 million due to lost or stolen merchandise, the majority coming from shoplifting. A concerning trend companies are desperately trying to reverse, investing in off-duty officers, AI-driven fraud detection, and you probably have seen those locked cases. I feel like everything is being locked up nowadays. This new surveillance tape shows the thief casually walking into the store. Her cart is so full that one of the boxes with a flat TV on it falls off and she leaves it behind. The new policy is not just to prevent theft, they also are focused on the safety of their customers and their employees. We can only be successful if the working and shopping environment is safe for all. And clearly it's not. So Target is now ordering its employees to stop theft over just $50. But even though it sounds like Target is now getting serious about stopping retail theft, what nobody's talking about is that other policies in place at some stores might be making the whole problem worse. Which is why just a few months ago, the chain shuttered its first ever Manhattan location. Which is odd considering several other retail stores in that very same plaza remain open and active today. And that closure, coupled with testimony from local police precincts near other Targets, reveals the chain may be making themselves more of a target for thieves than other stores in our area. In fact, New York already has a $4.4 billion shoplifting problem. All of that economic activity traced back to the sale of stolen goods. And we've got everything from crooks selling stolen items out of suitcases, to open air theft markets operating in front of the stores that just got looted, to legitimate looking small businesses, which are the physical arm of local shoplifting rings stealing items from department stores like Macy's and Nordstrom's, only to sell those items a few blocks away at what looks like an independent clothing store. And if you want to know the real reason why theft here is so bad and why stores like Target are now putting their employees on the front lines of what amounts to a massive crime wave, it's because nobody in this city really seems to care if it stops. Because in New York, if you steal anything under a thousand dollars in value, you won't go to jail. It's just a misdemeanor, which is essentially a get out of jail free card given to every small time crook in town, which makes our city a training ground for those wishing to become professional shoplifters who run their own businesses reselling stolen goods either to each other or on Amazon to you and me. But as you're about to see, this new plan of Target won't stop thieves from stealing from stores like this one right here because local reports indicate that Target may have a sympathetic view towards criminals and may not cooperate with law enforcement, which critics say is a recipe for more store closures. So here we are inside a Target, a store which is front and center in New York City's war on crime, as you can see from all the progressive plexiglass littering every aisle in the store. On top of that, all this security requires the staff to run from aisle to aisle, opening product lockers for people who still might try and take something that doesn't belong to them. And that's the problem, because we didn't get a $4.4 billion shoplifting economy here by accident. Plus, as it turns out, Target's own policies here in New York may actually encourage theft, which, as you're about to see, is a disaster because our shoplifters don't really need any encouragement. They feel like the law protects them, like there are no consequences. Uh, totally emboldened. So now they, they, they take an extra step now. They, they want to fight us. They constantly. It's often a battle. So this right here is the first-hand account of a retail store manager letting us know how emboldened New York's criminals are. These people come into a store and they fear nothing. And they aren't just in here ready to steal. They're ready for a potential altercation. And as you just heard, that store manager tells us criminals are already getting physical with staff. And that's why it's frightening to think Target employees might now have to step in when $50 is on the line. Especially when Target itself admits that theft is a real problem at its stores already in this city at levels 
levels that some might say are completely unstoppable. But to understand why theft is so bad in this city, it's because the people that are stealing, they're part of a full-time theft business. And we're not talking about Aladdin stealing bread so he can feed his monkey sidekick. Nope, instead we're talking about criminals who steal whatever they can get their hands on to resell it. Which is why stores are locking up pretty much everything, and it's also why shoplifters are so aggressive now. Because if something's not locked up on the shelf and they want to try to take it, sell it elsewhere, stopping them from doing that would mean that these criminals are now out of a job and they're not going to stand for that. Especially not in a country where hard work is how you achieve the American dream, which in this case is creating a nightmare for stores like Target. In a statement, Target explained why it made the difficult decision to shutter this store and eight others on the West Coast. Theft and organized retail crime are threatening the safety of our teens and guests. We can only be successful if the working and shopping environment is safe for all. And clearly it's... So what you know is so fascinating about this new plan of Target to have their employees interact with thieves is that we just heard about a store closing because the theft levels were so high that they were unsafe and it was dangerous for employees in this same city. Yet now this is a situation all employees are going to be told to get involved with. Hopefully this will just be a job for whoever handles in-store security. That being said, there are reports that some of the targets in New York don't actually care if they get stolen from. And this is not new either. Look at this. A local outlet a couple of years ago covered how a police precinct was complaining about theft from a target, saying that a third of all of their shoplifting incidents in the entire neighborhood were from that store in particular. And apparently the people running the store, they would call the police so that they could report on the incident that happened, but they would do it a day late or several hours after it happened at the earliest. Which, as you can imagine, makes things pretty tough for police to catch suspects after they clear out the shelves in a store to sell those items somewhere else. And you know something? The idea that people are just stealing to feed themselves or their family, well, how is that happening if you're stealing things like flashlights and electronics, which aren't food, which you can't eat? How does that work? Now, apparently the way Target used to handle theft was they would allow people to steal until they could charge those people with grand larceny. Now, every state's got different definitions of what constitutes petty larceny versus grand larceny, but in New York, theft of items over $1,000, then it becomes grand larceny, which is a felony, not a misdemeanor. But it seems like Target's new push to eliminate micro thievery by telling employees to step in when they see a $50 theft or greater flies in the face of that policy. Now, this may be a policy that cuts down theft in general across all of their stores across the entire country, but how effective is it going to be in an environment like New York where criminals are emboldened and tough? Lawmakers in Albany are getting closer to a deal on the state budget, and part of that deal includes a crackdown on retail theft. It calls for harsher penalties for assaults on retail workers, a tax credit to allow bodegas and small retail stores to upgrade their security, and funding for... So that measure that this video is talking about that makes it a felony to put your hands on or get physical with a retail store employee, that has passed, and now we're hearing that employees might have to step in and stop crime, which is a little frightening when you think about it, but I was able to speak to an employee here, and that person thinks that this will probably be limited just to the loss prevention officers, which hopefully ends up being the case. Normal store employees, they don't want to put their lives on the line for $50 worth of merchandise. It's not worth it. Plus, that job is going to require specific training to interact with somebody who could be committing a crime and might actually have some sort of weapon with them, which could still end up being dangerous for the loss prevention team, because what if the criminal here is ready for action? After all, if you corner a thief and they're emboldened and they feel like they've got a right to everything in the storage because this is what they do for a living, there could be real issues. But here's the thing, these retail theft felony laws, they're not exactly new. They're a few months old and we've still got many incidents in this city where peaceful shoplifting turns violent so a thief can leave the store. Which makes it incredibly frightening that we're now hearing employees may have to get in the trenches and confront these criminals. But these stores, they better do something because stealing items like Cascade and then reselling these on an Amazon storefront, this is big business. And it's not just big business here at Target, it's big business at every store in the city. hires an individual or crew called boosters. After robbing a retailer, they turn over the stolen goods to someone waiting nearby called a fence. Boosters often hit multiple stores a day, and they can even cross state lines and ship goods to a fence. The fence pays- That right there, that is a sophisticated business. And it's a business that is selling hundreds, maybe even thousands of stolen items across multiple channels every single day. And every time these online thieves sell out of all their stuff, they gotta come back to the warehouse, which is Macy's or Target, 
Target or Ulta Beauty and get more of the same stuff. Now, of course, in the case of a legitimate business, they would go back to their legitimate warehouse where they've got goods from a legitimate supplier that cost a certain price to get. But these criminals, they're impossible to compete against because the stuff they sell has an inventory cost of zero dollars. And if you can steal things and sell them for next to nothing, it doesn't really matter what you steal. And the items you're taking don't even necessarily have to be popular. It always helps if they are, of course. But if the thing you're reselling online costs half as much from you as it does from everybody else, who cares what it is? And whether you're selling candy or crop tops, it's impossible not to turn a profit if your prices are 50 to 70 percent less than everybody else. Else. And because everything that gets stolen is pretty much guaranteed to sell, it creates another problem. Because it means these crime kingpins have plenty of work for whoever wants it, regardless of their ability. And that brings us to the sad part of organized retail crime that none of us have probably ever considered. One example, an eBay shop called Tool King USA, where one man sold $3 million in stolen goods from Home Depot, Target, and Lowe's. Secret surveillance led to the arrest of this Atlanta man who's reporting to federal prison after selling more than $6 million of stolen goods on Amazon, Walmart, and Sears, although he denies operating. So how do you think that guy got his hands on $7 million worth of stuff? Did he do it alone? Absolutely not. He had help. And law enforcement sources suggest that the folks who will do the low-level stealing at stores like Ulta Beauty, oftentimes these are people in desperate situations themselves who need money right away. And sadly, there are people who the crime kingpins employing them consider to be expendable, especially here in New York. And oftentimes, the type of criminal who's convinced to go into a place like Levi's and steal a whole bunch of stuff, throw it in a trash bag and bring it to a warehouse somewhere, this is somebody who is maybe suffering from an addiction, who is maybe experiencing homelessness, somebody who's in a situation that is so tough where they've got really nothing to lose. And in New York, they don't have anything to lose because if it's under $1,000 worth of stuff, they won't even go to jail. And look at this recent incidence of retail theft at Target. All of the people arrested, about five people, had long rap sheets. They were criminals who'd stolen stuff before. And if you're a crime boss and you're looking for workers, all you've got to do is find people who don't care if they have a criminal record. And even if you do have one of those in New York, it doesn't do a whole lot to stop you from anything. It can't bar you from getting an apartment. And in some cases, it won't even stop you from getting a job at a place like the ones you used to steal from. Now, of course, personal problems aren't an excuse for being a criminal, but as our city continues to do less and less to combat crime, more and more people will choose to commit crime. But what's fascinating is you don't even have to necessarily be in a tough volume vulnerable position to get recruited by these gangs. In fact, many law-abiding people are unknowingly being recruited by these scammers as we speak, in spite of recent federal crackdowns on online retail theft. Amazon says the vast majority of sellers are required to complete a one-on-one -on -one video verification, during which they show a government ID. But Greer says criminal organizations easily find ways around this. They'll advertise on Craigslist for someone to own the business and it's a it's a it's a business opportunity right and so they sign up and they think that they're doing something really cool and they get on the phone with amazon and do the so this is what's so dangerous about the internet if criminals in places like new york are never punished for stealing the flow of illicit goods that have been looted from stores is never going to stop and there's always going to be an incentive for these guys to find ways to sell them even if they get blocked or banned from Amazon. Because even the one thing stores like Amazon do to block sellers who sell stolen goods is that they now conduct one-on-one -on -one in-person interviews. It seems the criminals have figured out a way around that. And the reason this doesn't work is because there's so much money at stake here from organized retail crime that the criminals are willing to part with a little bit of it in order for their businesses to continue. Here you have jobs being advertised on sites like Craigslist. People apply for those jobs thinking that they're starting a business, that they're helping partners who maybe aren't from the United States or have some excuse for why they can't open an Amazon account. That's something you then go and do for a small percentage of the profit, maybe two to 3% to keep that business open. And most importantly, to verify your identity in the eyes of Amazon, who may call you from time to time if they think something weird is happening. Now, before we get into why these criminals are so successful and how their schemes are so hard to stop, what we have here is an example of how going after the root causes of crime doesn't really stop crime at all. Now, many progressives will tell you that the root cause of crime is money. And if sites like Amazon would just remove the profit making potential by banning people, this would all go away. But the problem is the ability to steal stuff, the unlimited number of stolen goods that can be brought to a site hasn't gone away at all. And this is why the criminals are so aggressive when it comes to figuring out ways around any type of restriction that's placed on their businesses. And this is why they're now recruiting average, well-meaning people who think they're starting a business and helping themselves to a better life with the American dream at their fingertips. You're also the fall guy for when these criminals get taken down and when they figure out all the stuff in your store is stolen. If that even happens, because when retail theft rings get busted, only the people who get arrested or go to jail are the people at the top. And all of the low-level criminals who do the stealing at our stores and run from the police, they're all still out there. None of them 
went to jail, so all of the infrastructure needed to commit crime and continue these businesses still exists. And those criminals are willing to rent themselves out again to the highest bidder who wants them to go back to Ulta Beauty and do what they've been doing all week, stealing. And that's a problem because unfortunately in this city, we don't believe that the root cause of crime is the actual criminal. No, we believe it's money. So let's eliminate the money, but let the criminals roam around. That just doesn't make sense. And it's obviously not working. But another problem here is Amazon's role in all of this. Now, I would 100% rather do all of my shopping at Amazon than in Macy's. When I go in there, it makes me want to have a heart attack from anxiety. Because the store is a massive tourist attraction full of people, it's very chaotic. But the other problem that Macy's has is a lot of what they sell is now physically chained to the store itself so that it doesn't leave the store and then somehow manage to sell itself on Amazon for less than whatever Macy's was going to pay for it. And that's the real problem because Amazon, at the end of the day, they benefit from all of this retail theft, even if they don't support it, because every time items get sold on Amazon, instead of at Macy's, Amazon gets a cut of that profit, no matter where it came from. And many people say that this is now the reason why employees at stores like Target are being told to get in the trenches on the front lines of this crime war and stop the criminals themselves, because the police here can't do it, the city's laws can't do it, and there's really no respite for these businesses that just keep getting looted day after day after day, watching their own costs go up, and watching their competitors like Amazon succeed because they're underpricing them without even knowing that the stuff they're selling was stolen. Is that the real problem with retail theft? Is that why we've got so many empty stores nobody wants to run a business in? Will Target's new plan of having employees get involved be successful or is it gonna be bad for those employees? Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.